This room is called the America House Room because, as many of you know, we used to have America Häuser throughout Germany, and they served as places where Germans and Americans came together for cultural and educational events. And I think all of them had galleries where we hung works by Americans and by Germans who had some sort of connection to the United States. So with Mindy's temporary loan, loan of six months, I hope you'll be back and we'll see it here more often. Um, we're starting a new tradition here in which we'll accept loans of beautiful works of art by Americans and by Germans who have a connection to the United States and we'll hang them here so that our, our guests in this room can see them. Um, before I start, I really would like to thank the U.S. Embassy for this incredible support. Um, as Elizabeth mentioned, Dr. Barbara von Bachelsheim had taken my work, was determined to bring it to Germany, and took it into Martin Lorsch's gallery and what I thought was just going to be a lovely exhibition has turned into a whirlwind tour through Germany, speaking to kids at Dachau, seeing Dachau, being in Munich, I still am going to Hamburg, I'm going to Kiel, and when I actually um, met the German ambassador in Washington before I left, I think this is really funny, he said to me, you make sure to ask a lot of questions, and today the American ambassador said to me, I hope you're asking questions. So it seems to be the job of mine now to be asking questions, um, which is something I do in my life on a daily level anyway. Um, but I'd like to thank you all for being here. And uh, you have the catalog. I'd love for you to go see the work. And I think the work might even have a deeper meaning for you after we go through. What I'm going to do is speak for just about 20 minutes. I put together a presentation of work that really spans 30 years. And it's not just 30 years as an artist, as a painter, but really a Holocaust survivor's daughter trying to live a life. In 1996, an American photographer went to Auschwitz and did photographed the insides of the gas chambers. And this is what the insides look like after 50 years of the oxidation of the breath. That's what happened to the walls. So that's a photograph from 1996. I had done this painting in 1979. And this painting's in the permanent collection of the Jewish Museum in New York. And you can see the, the palette, you know, the this is an oil on canvas, it's called Lamentations. And on the bottom in Hebrew, right here, you can see written, and it's translated meaning, uh, the meaning of it is a loud trumpet was sounded, but a very small whimper was heard. And it's how I felt about the Holocaust at that time of the darkness, but it's still very much there. After I did this painting, there was a genuine explosion of color. And this um, painting was the first in another series called Lily in Blue. And here, L-I, L-I, all the writing. You know, I don't just make marks. Like somehow, every mark really does. I feel like I'm going to make a mark. It should mean something. Um, it should have meaning. This piece, um, I think it's the same word in Yiddish as in German, the Schenste which means the prettiest, and it was a tr it's a bit huge oil on canvas. It's the width of this whole wall, and it now lives in our home. I hadn't seen it for many years, and it got back to me magically. Um, and this was, to me, the absolute joy and beauty of what I really was raised with um, in reality. You know, not the, the Holocaust trauma and the anxiety, but the reality of being a child growing up in America in a lovely home, and uh, with beautiful, a beautiful life. But then it came back, and I really, really struggled the year I made this work. I went into a deep depression after doing all that colorful work, and I start each work writing what I'm thinking and feeling on the work. And this piece is called Who's the Driver? Because I felt that I was really being driven to still talk about this, um, this darkness this sadness. You don't grow up in a Holocaust survivor's home without being aware that they experience such sadness and such tragedy, and you spend every day of your life trying to make it okay. I feel very strongly in closing that 
it's not just about the survival of beauty, but that we really have to transform this legacy of loss. I know that the Germans struggle with their legacy, and the reality is we're now in third, fourth generation, and they can't be blamed. I didn't like to be blamed for anything I didn't do. And I think for the survivors who are starting to die out, we can't remember them just as a sack of bones in Auschwitz. They had lives before the war, and they created beautiful lives and meaningful lives after the war, and we have to honor that. Thank you.